to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Friday, September 20th, the Fantasy Footballers. Jason Moore is here. Happy to be here. Mike Wright, present. And accounted for. I'm Andy Holloway. We've got matchups on the show today. We'll talk briefly about last night's ball game. A lopsided affair. <laughs> I found it quite boring. But it was he, good to see Aaron Rodgers get it he going. Looked, so he, he played quite well. He played very well. Yeah, if you, <laughs> if you looked at uh, like the next gen stats, the the where the passes were completed, and you compare the weeks, it looks like oh yeah, this is this is what we were hoping for. Someone that can hit all the areas of the field, can go left, can go right, and scramble a little. It yeah. speaks what? to what yeah. Mike said last week watching the Garrett Wilson film that Aaron Rodgers looked a little bit rusty. Missed some opportunities, but that's probably how it's supposed to be. Like Kirk Cousins, too, like to end the game the way he did. Like both of those guys coming off the Achilles, maybe rounding into form, maybe giving you some uh, hope for Drake London and some hope for Garrett Wilson's future. I had people reach out today, and I'll let you guys answer this question. I'll tell you how I answered it. They said, Is this a sell high opportunity for Garrett Wilson? Because he got into the end zone, the yardage wasn't very high. What would you say to that question? Uh, so I, I, he is, I think, the question of the game is like, is that was this a good game because he got a touchdown, or was this a bad game because he got thirty three total yards? Uh, you saw Aaron Rodgers talk about uh, after the game. He said, yes. you know, we had the first three weeks where the defenses we faced were just they just happened to have their main goal to be to take out Garrett Wilson. But I would, I, I go to back to okay, well, when he was a Packers uh, quarterback. Every single defense was trying to take out Devontae Adams, and they couldn't, you know? So is he really a true alpha, an alpha? I'm talking like one of those top five wide receivers in the NFL. One of those guys that – who you hoped he would develop into this season when you drafted him at like that one-two turn. I – And I, I don't think so. I think that he it's still in the realm of possibility for Garrett Wilson because some of the ways that Devontae Adams was unable to – be taken away by a defense was they worked together for so many years like yes. the back shoulder throws the timing routes knowing where and when your guy is going to be there I actually Very responded fair. that I wouldn't I wouldn't try to sell high Mike what would you do yeah so if the my rebuttal to what you're saying Jay is just defenses are different now I mean like it's defenses are are the way that they scheme to take out a number one with the, I mean, is it's the hot thing, the cover two, but it it works. Like if if you choose to take out a player, I mean, like like Jamar Chase, the Kansas City Chiefs last week, in which they have a, a pretty good corner, but their entire game plan was Jamar Chase is not going to beat us, and you would, I think you'd agree, Jamar Chase is one of the best wide receivers in the game for sure. He was removed by the Kansas City Chiefs. Like it's just things are able to do that right before. The we started recording, watched every Garrett Wilson target real quick, and the the misses were you had the one on the sideline where like that one's on Garrett. You got to get those feet down. Like yeah, that, that was, yeah. I was uh, disappointed in that play. That was that was very disappointing because he just dude, you got to drag. You got to drag that other foot. You have to know you got to do it's that. Been a couple of times earlier this year too. And then the yeah the other misses were really I don't know, I don't know exactly where. The, the route is supposed to meet, but the the mind meld. What is what is going on over here? I, You're making a whole thing about yeah, it, so I'm I got to so, stop talking. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You look, gave the when, Falcon when you some look eyes. down at your mug of uh -huh. water that's been filled by a different person, yeah. and there's a hair in it. Oh, oh no! Oh, you know, no. I'm just, oh the Falcon. Oh, was this a Falcon mustache hair? Is this a feather? It was. It was a fairly long <laughs> hair. I'm. I, this is Gross. disgusting. Yeah. Oh man! Oh, oh he, oh, threw, he <laughs> threw the water. He, he, oh. he dumped the water. There is he, a camera right over there. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, not, right. it's not splash the camera. Anyways, the mind meld that he had that Rogers eventually got with Adams. And remember, 
Remember who sucked? Oh, yeah. Who was a complete <laughs> and total bust in the NFL? Devontae, Devontae Adams. Adams. And then the mind, the, then they got totally locked in, and there were it was an out route, and I think Rodgers missed it. And then there was a couple other ones where clearly what Rodgers wanted Will, or Garrett to do, he just they their communication level wasn't there. All that to say, so what does that mean for this year? That you, the elite stuff, if that's going to happen, that w it will be over the second half of getting them more and more practices together. I mean, think about how much these guys have actually practiced together. Last year's off season, then he got hurt, and then he was recovering, and this off season in a couple games. So I still, I still think that I, leaves things open. Yes. To, to not getting it together for this season. 100%. That could be in the range of outcomes. It also matters if Conklin and Lazard and Williams are consistent pass catchers in the offense that defenses have to account for because the recipe to start the year was Garrett Wilson and let's let everybody else try to beat us. Yeah, I, I, I think that I, I agree with you, Andy. I would not sell high here. I'm not calling for Garrett Wilson to you know have a bad season by any means. I'm still a little bit disappointed that he does not present as true alpha to me. Um, and maybe that'll happen this season, but I think he'll be a, a, a very solid wide receiver too. I, so, I take the con the Rodgers comments after the game. I do take those to heart of him saying the what you said, Jay. Of, no, the, it's Aaron Rodgers not saying Garrett Wilson needs to do something better. He's saying, no, the defenses are removing him from the game plan and that – and the rest of the quote was like, and that's a testament to the talent mm -hmm. that Garrett Wilson is, that the other teams are so freaked out by him that we have to find a different way to win. So Rodgers was 27 for 35 for 281 and two. This was a completely valuable fantasy start if you were to yeah. have streamed Aaron Rodgers. So we haven't been able to say that in a long time. The other two storylines from the night for me, uh, obviously on the – on the New England side, it was atrocious top to bottom. Uh, I mean, Ramondre Stevenson was 6 for 23 on the ground with a fumble. He was negative in a lot of your leagues. He was .7 in one of mine. This is a situation where he was number two, I believe, in total touches at the position coming into week three, and it was a disaster from the jump so the people jets, were very frustrated the jets don't have a great r rush defense this is the offensive line for yeah. the patriots yeah we, we threw we kind of threw that out there yesterday uh on yesterday's show of like look they're gonna be missing three starters and and one of their other starters is, was been on the injury report all week so it was like there was no if i had ramondre even with that knowing that i was i was still gonna play ramondre he had been way too good but this is just now you need to really pay attention to what's going on with this offensive line. The other story to me, it's a real one. And that face that Jason has is not, oh, yeah. it's not a face of disaster. The, the beast. I mean, Braylon oh, Allen was 11 God. for 55. <laughs> 55! Brees Hall was 16 for 54 with a touchdown. This is the third week that Braylon Allen has showed you something special on the field. Four receptions for... Brees Hall. However, three for Bray Braylon Allen. Yeah, I mean, this is like it's a real thing. Twenty opportunities for Brees. <clears throat> yeah, he's fourteen. He's good. Fourteen opportunities for Braylon Allen. This might be a game where you go, hey, well, they, they there were was blowing. a fumble right by by Brees. I thought there was a fumble lost by Brees. Um, you you I'll can vet that, but uh, going back through the box score and seeing like when was the involvement uh, of Braylon Allen? A fumble out of bounds. Um, the. Braylon Allen had seven of his 14 opportunities in the first half, seven in the second half. He is just a part of the offense. Yep. And I am not in any way, shape, or form in the slightest concerned that Brees is going to um, have a bad season now or be in a committee timeshare where he's he's not going uh, – every single week, Brees is going to be very good for fantasy. I agree. But it does cap that, like – Christian McCaffrey legendary type of season Don't, might take RB one overall off the table. Exactly, you're you're not going to be out there. You know, you're going to have some touchdowns go to Braylon Allen. You're going to have some passing work go to Braylon Allen, and that's just that's just unfortunate. But um, hopefully, it keeps Brees upright. And Braylon Allen, I mean, talk about an RB one rookie season for the Dallas Cowboys. Oh my god! <laughs> I mean, what are you doing, Cowboys? What are you doing, Forty ers 
Sure. And Isaac Garendo ahead of Braylon Allen. I mean, then Ray Davis in Buffalo ahead of Braylon Allen. He, Braylon tweeted out because like it, he retweeted. Uh, someone had thrown out into the into the internet. Like, how did this? How did the NFL let this happen? Of uh, this guy fall into the fourth round? The you know the Jets He's get him twenty years young. Still can't buy a beer. And he retweeted. Uh, it, I don't have it in front of me, but essentially saying like. They all, they wanted me to see me run in my underwear to 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 judge if I'm a good football player. Yeah, and that that this is come. That's like Dalvin Cook, um, that's like Kareem Hunt. We have these players that struggled on on Combine Day, and how many years do we need? When do we get the influence to tell them to put the pads on the forty? Yeah, you can seriously. run the regular forty. Yeah, you know what would be cool? The ratio. How about the ratio between the pads on, pads off, forty? Yeah, Can we I, do something that this, represents playing football? This is a guy that a lot of people really liked in the draft process. Mike, I can't remember if he was your running back two or he three. Was, he was my two. Yeah, I mean, you, you you loved him coming in. I mean, he's a young monster. Yeah, it's because he didn't run. He didn't do the 40. So the, the, he's at least insinuating that that was a knock. Yeah, it, it was. He you don't call that was seventh or eighth off the board at running back and, and right now looks like by far the, the best. The play where the – he had a defender just clobber him in the backfield, and he doesn't move. <laughs> and he's just like, um, "Okay, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna go over there now. <laughs> Thank you for your best effort." <laughs> On the flip side, <laughs> that pass protection for Brees Hall. Oh, where he oh <laughs> my gosh! I thought it was. A, I thought he got knocked out the way he he, he helicoptered. <laughs> Braylon up? Allen is six. He, One two thirty six. He is at twenty. A beast. He was he was a collegiate superstar at seventeen. We need to yes. like this is just it's a really good job by the Jets because we know injuries happen. We know how important it is to take you know give your workhorse the ability to take some plays off so they're more efficient and effective. But it's really been an impressive start to the year. Lazard scored again. Oh man! Tyler Conklin had his a, first big game. He was a t-shirt rip away. That Lazard, that that shirt went for infinity yards. The mummy yeah. moment yes. in the game, unraveling. <laughs> All right, uh, it is Friday. Foot Clan Friday. All right, every Friday we give a one hundred dollar gift card away to FantasyChamps.com, along with a signed, uh, or rather, a fantasy footballer's T-shirt. The winner today, Twisted Hex. Twisted Hex over on jointhefoot.com. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Let's jump into the news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Texans running backs Joe Mixon and Damian Pierce still did not practice on Thursday. Okay. That would leave Cam Akers and Daria Gumbawale as the remaining two pieces of the depth chart it would also put like if both guys missed cam Akers is an okay start yeah he's an okay start he's a good player he's looked good in the system the coaches have talked him up but it's a difficult matchup against uh the vikings sometimes you get that next guy up and you're all excited i think he's just a, a good flex play carson Steele or cam Akers in that situation i oh man i think i would go cam Akers. I'd we just don't know cam too. how the steel uh, I, I do think Steele will get the majority of the first and second down work. It's just a matter of does he get the targets or is that all P Ryan? And, and we does just he have know. any big plays as a starter? You know, I mean, when sure. you're running the football, is this, uh, you know, a use check gain four or five yards or does he have a breakout, you know, run? Well, he starts falling from behind the line of scrimmage. That's true. So it, he'll <laughs> fall forward always. I would love it if they put one of the receivers back behind, like an I formation, and they just they push shoved him. him in the back. And then he starts the fall. Nico limited. I, that's a good sign that yeah. he could be back out there. Jordan Love in pads has a realistic chance of playing, according to Ian Rappaport. I, uh, you know, if you're the Packers coming off a win, I, I might not do it. Yeah, it, and you have the revenge narrative with Malik Willis going to Tennessee. Will you allow <laughs> him to be the starter and go in there and get the W? Mm. I'm not um, sure how much that matters. What yeah, what does think. matter is that I do think Tennessee at home against Malik Willis is an unbelievably good play. Uh, DST? Yeah, DST. Okay. It's just a matter of you don't know yet whether or not um, 
you're facing Jordan Love or Malik Willis. Jaden Reed limited should be back out there. Chargers quarterback Justin Herbert limited after a DMP on Wednesday. He should be back out there. Joshua Palmer didn't practice or play in the last couple games. Oh yeah, at least I, that I, I that I noticed. Yeah, no calf elbow injury. We also got word just now this morning that Michael Pittman was not practicing. Oh come but, on! No no no, hold on. He's not practicing today, but he is out there. Hmm. Hmm. Huh? He's, he's just he's hanging out. He's got a lawn chair. What I'll follow up? He's at practice. He's just not practicing. Al, let us know if you hear more about Michael Pittman. We'll do. Uh, we have. I finally decided. I finally decided I was going to go <laughs> Anthony Richardson for my quarterback trio. Oh, oh you I, had made that call. I made that call. That was Purdy, Purdy, Watson, Gino. Gino. Yep, and and I dropped Purdy even, and uh, oh. man, now it's a Purdy bad decision. <laughs> Swish. Swish. <laughs> I love my George team. Kittle was held out of Thursday's practice with hamstring tightness. We will continue yeah. to monitor that. It's part of our show today. C.D. Lamb returned in a limited fashion. Uh, Mike McCarthy said not of a high concern. Kenneth Walker remained sidelined and seems like he'll be sidelined yeah. for at least another week. And then at T. Least. Higgins returned to practice, and maybe he'll be back out there on Monday. Limited practice. Yeah, well, that is returning. Yeah, no, it is. I mean, you want to see at least two full practices coming back from a hamstring injury. But the, Monday this night is, game. I was going to say, this is like the Wednesday practice for them because they're on Monday night football. Yeah, every every beat reporter right now saying that Michael Pittman is not practicing. He's just, huh. he's out there, man. He's What's, out there. Is he just, like, yeah. is he mad because he can't get good passes? Well, here's the thing. If you're not practicing, for all the players that aren't practicing, what are they at home? Like, aren't they always all there? Yeah, this is a weird. I mean, we're probably reading too much into it. We should just report it as not practicing. All okay. Right. Um, you know, I remember Devonte Smith was missing some practices before the season started. He was just standing there watching. He's in like, Hawaii. Like, <laughs> <laughs> all right, that was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com/insurance. We'll take a break and come back with the fantasy forecast. All right. Yesterday we covered the Giants, Browns, Packers, Titans, Bears, Colts, Texans, Vikings, Eagles, Saints, Chargers, Steelers. We got more matchups today. It's time for Fantasy Forecast, presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. You guys remember earlier when the Falcon put a hair in my drink? Yeah, intentionally? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That was yeah. very disgusting. I got a, I got and rude. a new I got a new drink now. Yeah, right, probably, probably two hairs in there. I'm gonna take a look. <laughs> yeah, I hope you crack that thing open. Ah, uh, you know what? I think he opened it. Oh, oh, oh yeah, we know. Oh. When you get down to the last sip, you're gonna be pulling long hair out of your mouth. Gross. So gross. So gross. All right, nine matchups left, and we got fantasy face off today. Somebody is gonna yeah. spin the wheel of shame. Somebody. Last year's champion. <laughs> oh man. Cool. <laughs> yeah, man. If I've got to have it. <laughs> you just have you have a way of dealing with these things. Yeah. Denver at 0-2 taking on the 2-0 and Tampa Bay Buccaneers. DraftKings Sportsbook line Tampa minus 6.5 over under 41. Trap game for Tampa? Uh, Victory-wise, no. No, this is not a trap game. No, right? the, just... for fantasy, though, uh, I mean, I don't know that I want to play Baker. Yeah, he's been, you know, playing very well, but – you know, guys like, I mean, Carr for sure. Gino? Gino would be, like, right on that fringe of, of who I'd rather start. Because just trying to think. Gino. You'd go Gino? I would, it's yeah. just Like, think about some upside here where the, the, the Broncos offense can do nothing. Like, and you are really, you're reluctantly playing one guy, I think, from the Denver Broncos. At least uh, for Javante? me. It's Javante Williams where week one, the snaps were... And, and and opportunities were more shared than week two. It went back to Javante Williams being a, a workhorse. His his rushing yard is sitting at forty six and a half. I I don't I don't know. There was uh we should check on Vita Vea. Yo, he's he's not. He, I don't think he's playing this week. Okay, so that's at least a yeah. No, it's, that's it's something. I, I think it's I think it's everything. I, I mean, go look at their numbers this year versus last year. So yeah, far. if 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 Vita Vea was there, Javante Williams is not a playable asset to me. 
because he's just a volume guy and he's he's going to have 13 yards on the ground. Vita but, Vea is also a volume guy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he is. Uh, Vita Vea on the defensive line for Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I, I assume he's not going to play. That's what it seems like. And if he's not, you can you can – Close your eyes and put Javante yeah, in, and then it, check out on the on the. Just give Javante those uh, five targets, please. Godwin, yeah. Evans, yeah, Rashad White if he's active. He was working in practice. He's a tougher start, I think. Ah, I'm a groin. Yeah, he I mean, he hurt the groin in the game. He's been limited. We know that for Detroit, the week because of it. Like Rashad White is not an efficient runner already. Right. Then you face Detroit, who's number one against running backs. So I wouldn't be. You know, it could have been a little bit of an outlier. Obviously, lowest receiving total in 20 games for Rashad White. Week one, he was six for 75. I'd have a hard time. Like, would you bench Rashad no. White for Carson Steele or Cam Akers I, I, I or wouldn't, Gus Edwards? No, I wouldn't bench. If Rashad White is active, I, I'm basically playing whichever running back is active in this game. Because if Rashad White is out, Bucky Irving has looked good enough. Huge to go. opportunity. Huge yeah. opportunity. So whoever the starting running back is, I will play him. I'm not going to play Bucky if Rashad White is active. Let's say Rashad White or you drafted J.K. Dobbins against the Pittsburgh Steelers. I would go Rashad White. Okay. The, the the Steelers defense is you know full legit, and I expect that game to have a solid 30 points scored. Carolina 0 and 2 taking on the 1 and 1 Las Vegas Raiders. The DraftKings Sportsbook line here: Vegas the Raiders minus five. Over-under is 40. And wild comeback last week for the Raiders. Their odds of winning were not high. And then all of a sudden, flip the script. Bowers, Devontae Adams, Gardner Minshew. They got it together and uh, took out the took out the Ravens. Big surprise. The over-under here is just 40. That gives Carolina 17. Andy Dalton's the starter. The Raiders right now, we talked about them. On the waiver wire show, in terms of opportunity to pick them up and play them against Carolina, here's who they play. Just so you know, if you want a, a long term pickup, Carolina at home. It's good. Cleveland at home. Uh, that's good. It's good. At Denver, that's, Bo Nix. That's good. Versus Pittsburgh at home. That's probably good. That's great. At Los Angeles, the Rams with. What they've got. Yeah, going we'll see on. what they have there. So that's a end. five week stretch that I think is very sure. for a solid defense that can rush the passer, that can put up a surprise good game. If you've got Max Crosby, you can cause havoc for fantasy. So Andy Dalton, the era, the Dalton era begins again in Carolina. I like the uh I don't remember what radio show was talking about it, but they they mentioned that Andy Dalton Seems like he's the backup for like six teams, and like whatever team loses their starter first, <laughs> he just becomes their starter. That's, that's like he's still funny. the Cowboys backup, and he said it was very funny. That's yeah, what the NFL should do. They should have like a queue <laughs> of backups so that the quality of their product is good. Oh my gosh! Like that's a so rankings funny. of backups, and the, all of those guys. Oh, go, Heineke's in that list. They all go and they train together. They're <laughs> you know what I mean. They're they're learning the playbooks of all the teams. That's I like great. It. Well, that group that group is going to include Bryce Young wandering over to that <laughs> to that group soon. Oh, man, do you start Panthers in this game? I mean, I no, I don't. I, I wait and see. Yes, th this is. Uh, th I'm fine grabbing them off of waivers. Um, well, whether you want to take the shot on Xavier Liguet or Deontay Johnson, um, including it obviously in all super flex leagues, Andy Dalton went for a lot. They're all good to have on your roster to see what's going to come, but you're not going to start them on the road week one, not knowing the pecking order. So I think you check out on the Carolina side of the ball. Maybe, maybe Chuba. Chuba is one of those where 15 opportunities less running backs are needed. He, he'll he get the opportunity. Um, Chuba or Cam Akers if he's, uh, if there's no mixing. If there's no mixing and no um, Pierce. Pierce, then I would go Akers. Otherwise, Chuba. I think I'd go Chuba. Mike has mentioned Zamir White, who has a rushing and receiving line on DK of 71 and a half, speaking to the 31st ranked Carolina run defense. Yep. Mike is the process. Mike is, you know, stiff arming the, the film on Zamir White so far and going with the opportunity uh, in Carolina. If you have Alexander Madison on your team, he's on the bench. Yeah. And, and, you know, just don't have him on your team. Uh, Devontae Adams and Brock Bowers are locks to, yep. to play in this game. Bowers has started the week as well. And I think Jacoby Myers, if you still have him, you can cut him because he got, he got brocked. He got brocked right in the face. Yeah, he did. Yeah. 
Anybody else in this matchup you want to no. discuss? No. Miami's one and one. They travel to Seattle to take on the Seahawks. The DK Sportsbook line here, Seattle minus four and a half. The over-under is 41 yeah. and a half. I would love to be able to hit that button in this one, but I just think Seattle gets another. I think they get another win to start the year. Uh, Skylar Thompson starting for Miami. Geno Smith has been playing good football in his mic start of the week. And with with uh, steel underpants on. Okay. 74% of his passes completed. Got a lot out of JSN last week. Is JSN now... Like, are you at the point where he's he should be in your lineup every week after what you saw last? At least as a Sunday? as a flex. That, that was just when when a young player does something like that, you you got to respond to it. Something like that with sixteen targets for twelve receptions and yeah. one hundred and seventeen yards. Yeah, and his yeah, I mean, you, his line's sitting at forty nine and a half yards. I would. Yeah, I mean, I we'll when see. he is not a player that's come out of nowhere. Right. This is a first yes. round draft pick last year who was said to be the best wide receiver in the draft class. Looked awesome as a prospect and was underutilized with a terrible Shane Waldron offense last year. Now you see Shane Waldron leave. The the Ryan Grubb offense we talked about a lot this offseason coming in and hopefully having a, a you know a, a a good utilization of the slot player like he did um you know for the University of Washington and then boom bam you see it the utilization is so different. He's not getting all of his passes behind the line of scrimmage. So I'm I'm in on I I don't want to be late to the party. Uh, on being like, I need to see it again. I'll, I'll put JSN in my lineup. Would you put him in over Amari Cooper against the Giants? Ooh, mm, yeah, I think so. I okay. think I would. Tank Dell against Minnesota? I'd play Tank. That one's close. I, I, I still like Tank. Wait a minute. Hmm. Wait a minute. Yesterday you said you'd play Cooper against the Giants. Did I? Over Tank against Minnesota. Oh, well, I, I have, didn't. It's no, a, it's not a new you. day. I, I'm not pointing at you. Okay, I'm pointing right. at Mike. Well, that was yesterday. So you've changed now. So Cooper versus Tank. I mean, I think you can't say Cooper. Say Cooper. No, it, <laughs> you can't say do it. that. You, Make you, the world implode. Fantasy algebra doesn't always have to add up. No, I, I, I like that's close. I mean, I can check the. That's just the 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 vibes. Can check the actual rankings here. Uh, so oh man, they're gonna say Cooper. I have Tank one spot ahead of Cooper. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, Brian yeah. Thomas Jr. or JSN? Uh, JSN. Metcalf's in your lineup. Charbonnet's in your lineup, right? Uh, um, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of gross, but... Miami has been really good defensively against all positions except for running back. Charbonnet just barely qualifies as a running back. Yeah, Charbonnet is not good on the ground, but he gets enough... He, he, he can score touchdowns, and he's very involved in the passing game. He is, he is the reason that I really like Geno this week. And I think you brought that up in your start of the week yeah. yesterday, but they're not going to be able to run the ball well, and I, I think they're going to sling it. On the other side, Skylar Thompson, when he had Jalen Waddell um, the last time he was a starter, Waddell had 23, 44, yeah. and 44 receiving yards. Are you actually just – I'm straight benching him. You're straight benching Jalen Waddell. I'm straight benching Jalen Waddell. There are a lot of a lot of flex options I would rather have over Waddell. It's such it – And Tyreek, Tyre you just yes, have Tyre to play. Tyreek, you will play him, his, but – his production, you have to expect it to come down. Yeah, Tyreek, um, I think he had one good game with Skyler, and the rest were were pretty bad. Devon Achan should be fine. Seven receptions in each of the first two weeks, yes. and you saw Skyler come in and check it down to him. It looks like Raheem Mostert's probably not going to play, so Achan's in, Tyreek Hill's in. I don't expect a monstrous game, and Jalen Waddle's benched. Okay, that seems like we covered that one. Baltimore is 0-2. You talked about this, Jason, yesterday. Dallas is 1-1. They're playing in Dallas, and the DK Sportsbook line is actually Baltimore minus one on the road. Ooh. Is that the most updated line, Kyle? Wow. Correct. Baltimore minus one in Dallas. So Vegas does not like what they've seen from the uh, Dallas defense so far this year at all. And Dallas just got beat at home by New Orleans. So maybe the, you know. This is like the first playoff game of the season. Because if you go one and two or zero oh and three, which one of these teams right. will leave this game as a loser, you are lo you are looking at. Well, the Ravens are really hoping to be one and two. <laughs> fair, fair. I guess both teams could leave as one and two, but um, which is wild in and of itself. The losing team of this game will have harder odds, obviously, to make the playoffs, and they'll be they'll be looking at a gauntlet. Baltimore has allowed the most passing yards 
in football. So Dak, CD, that bodes well for them at home. Dallas has been destroyed on the ground. So Derrick Henry. Yes, like, sir. These are two teams I think we expected to come in and have imposing defenses because that's the way that they've been for years, and neither one has been able to – I mean, Baltimore got carved by Minshew at home. It was weird. Let that sit. It was weird. So, you know, maybe this over-under of 48, this passing yards line for Dak is set at 253. Okay. Maybe we get – a fun game, yeah. even yeah. if one team ends up 0-3 at the end of it. I I, th I think it'll be a, a, a fun NFL game. Hopefully for fantasy, what we need for fantasy to be fun is we need CD and Dak to get it going, which uh, right now it seems like with what Baltimore showed us early on in th through the first two weeks, they should get it They should get it going. If CD's healthy, they'll score points. If they score points, then uh, I do think Mark Andrews is going to be very involved. The Dallas defense is kind of middle of the pack against tight ends. Uh, the utilization of Mark Andrews was very good last week. He should. I think this is going to be his get right game. Do you go right back to Turd Ferguson if he's active? I think so. I'd be comfortable with that because he's been limited. It's it, it. He's trending to play. Turd Ferguson or Isaiah Likely. I go, oh, I would oh. go Likely. same game. I'd go Fergie. So Mike split the time. I would go. I'd go Ferguson. Okay, let me ask him again in a couple minutes. Hold on. Ask me tomorrow. <laughs> okay. Yeah, tomorrow it'll, it might change. So, uh, start sit decisions outside of the big boys. Uh, Zay Flyers had a big game. Mark Andrews started the week for Jason. Jalen Tolbert, you're keeping a little bit of an eye on yeah. him because I'm the targets were there last week and he played a bunch of snaps. Yeah, we're keeping our eye on on some stuff of like the split of, of Brandon Cooks or Jalen Tolbert. Like, Tolbert was – Cooks was good week one. Tolbert was the guy in week two. So, I, I don't really have confidence to start any of them and then the running back room is just it's on watch yeah what do you do in dallas man right right now i'm not forcing anyone into my lineup uh if i'm playing anyone it's rico dowdle uh but i would prefer to just have dowdle on my bench another week and see how it shakes that is up. the right that's the right choice i mean baltimore last year 14 points given up to the entire running back group for a team this year they're right on par with that 14.6 all of those names we mentioned earlier i would start over you know any any, any of the, Dallas option yes correct yeah that that's fine but it's just the quick reminder of Elliot was at is was six for sixteen last week Deuce Vaughn was four for eleven Dowdle was the only running back who, who did he started and he was the only one who had any efficiency and yet he, he only had seven carries yeah, yeah. so the, it's like the volume's not there yet so Dallas has to figure out what I, they're doing I think Dallas might try something new at running back every week they might. The San Francisco 49ers at 1-1 one and one, taking on the Los Angeles Rams in L.A. The Rams are 0-2 and 6.5 and and point home underdogs against wow. the 49ers. Yeah. The over-under is 43.5. I mean, this gives the Rams 18.5 points. The 49ers implied point total is 25. Both teams going through major injury issues. No Debo. Kittle is, we'll see right now, like, I assume we're starting Kittle if he's active. Yes. And then Brandon Ayuk, he hasn't gotten it going yet. This will be a chance to do that. And the Rams are just reeling. They have offensive line issues. They have cornerback issues. They have two starting wide receivers that we all drafted to be great that are going to be on the bench. No Cooper Cup and no Puka Nakua this week, which means like Kyron so far has been very inefficient. Ky Kyron has – he's one of the few runners that have uh, so many opportunities but hasn't even had a 10-yard run this year. Yeah. So it is you know we talked about you know Brees Hall and Braylon Allen's impact on Brees Hall's ceiling. Are these injuries too hard to overcome for Kyron in terms of top five potential? Yeah, I I think that they are too hard to overcome for top five potential. He's going to be utilized. He'll, they'll pass the ball to him if they get to the goal line. They'll use him. Um, he's certainly a player I'm still starting, but this isn't an, an exciting matchup. Uh, obviously, the 49ers have a very good defense, so you're just not expecting big things. It's it's not just the line. Again, on the road, currently six and a half point favorites is pretty ridiculous. But like Jordan Mason, starting running back for the 49ers, his line is 92 and a half Holy rushing yards. Moly, rushing yards. His 
His line is 92 and a half it's, yards rushing yeah. on might, the road. I might take the over, man. Yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. Like the, the 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 Sharps, what they are expecting from this game is a lot of – For context – Is a beat down of the Rams. For context there, that is the highest of any running back yeah. this week. So, wow. I mean, and, and what's going to happen is if you get out of control, if the Rams can't protect Matthew Stafford um, and, you know, you get a, a, a touchdown lead here, you're just going to have them running down the throats of the Rams over and over and over. Are you playing any of the the Rams wide receivers who got picked up? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think Demarcus Robinson's a good flex option. Okay, that that's the one that I would want. You could take random flying shots on anyone else. <laughs> the shots are flying. I mean, you want to put in Tutu. You want to put in Tyler Johnson. That's the problem with all the other guys. Tyler Whittington, Tutu. It feels like DeMarcus is the one that you know is going to be out there the most. Yeah, I mean, uh, put it this way. I would go DeMarcus, and then after that, I would go Jawan Jennings on the other side of the ball. <laughs> uh, over to to right. over Tyler Johnson. I think Jawan Jennings is like this week's uh, spot start from the waiver wire if you need one of those. Uh, yeah. The only the only problem with Jawan Jennings is, I mean, that rushing line for Jordan Mason insinuates they might not need to throw the ball a lot. They're just going to run the, the second half. Dude, of the game out. The Rams. So it's the 49ers this week on the road against the Bears, at home against the Packers, bye week, Las Vegas Raiders at home, Minnesota Vikings at home. The, Those whew. are almost all good defenses. Oh, gosh. That's brutal. That's brutal for fantasy. All right. Um, anything else in this game? Uh, Colby Jack, we're avoiding. Uh, for now, I, I'm, I'm worried he's going to have to block. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Detroit is one and one, and they take on the Arizona Cardinals, also one and one. The DraftKings Sportsbook line here: Detroit minus three on the road against Arizona. How dare you? The over under, the over under is a How? beautiful. I'm never going back Have you heard this song? Detroit by three. Over under fifty one and a half. Get That's very nice. Will the pants be coming off this week? I believe it says, I'm never going back to the pants store, Andy. So, Marvin Harrison, we are yes, we are calm, you're, you're collected, and, and happy. Yeah, I mean, uh, the Rams, or I'm sorry, the, the, the Lions over the last couple of years have been very easy to figure out. And so far to start this season, it is similar. You cannot run on them, and you can and must throw on them. It is a wonderfully predictable thing for fantasy football. So this is a game you want the wide receivers in. I think Greg Dortch is actually another very good spot start. He's sitting out on your waivers right now. If you're in a full PPR, I think you could put him in and you're going to get five, six, seven receptions because the most slot points given up, uh, slot receptions, is to, I mean, you saw all this with Chris Godwin last week, uh, just have a monster game because that's where Detroit is most susceptible. Uh, but Marvin obviously should be good. Yep. Tyler should be good. James Conner, you hold your breath. You're not going to bench him, but you, I, I mean, I don't know if you've got great options, but I, I would, I would I'd still, play I him. would play James Conner, but you just can't expect a ton. Here. I'd still play him. His his rushing yard line is still sitting at 61 and a half. That's healthy enough when you combine in the the receptions he should get. And Trey McBride has the highest target share of tight ends right now. Um. Where are you sitting with this Jared Goff experience in 2024? This is a... Very disappointed. I mean, the dominator narrative has not proved no. true. Get this man outside. He needs some fresh air. <laughs> so He's so, a domester fire. <laughs> so what do we think? It, it, it should still work. Yeah, I mean, all of the process, <laughs> it, it is very difficult. He threw the ball 55 times. It How many? 55! It is very difficult to have a bad performance followed by a bad performance and then start that player. But the process, this is not, <laughs> Goff has played for years. Yeah. This is not like he forgot how to play. It's not like he's not throwing a lot of uh, yardage through the first two weeks. Goff is a good play this week. He really is. It's difficult to say that you sound stupid after back-to-back -back losses. This is a 51.5 point spread where... You know, you're going to throw, and, and the the Cardinals don't have cornerbacks that can really stop these wide receivers. Jameson Williams, your start of the week, should be awesome. His line is 54 and a half. Yeah. Amon, yeah. Amon Ross St. Brown is awesome. Those two guys should feast. 
and it's really just a matter of who gets the touchdowns. So if David Montgomery leaves this game with two touchdowns, okay, you're going to be sad. Maybe Jared Goff didn't have a monstrous performance, but I think Jared Goff is someone – like I would start him over all the guys that I'm debating on my team right now, Anthony Richardson and Brock Purdy and, and Geno Smith. Goff would be in over them. What are other question marks from this game that you want to talk about? Anything else? I mean, is this uh, – is Trey McBride going to have his breakout performance this week? Uh, I mean, he had it last week. Yeah, last week. No, he did not. Well, last week was that good. touchdown. Six for sixty-seven. He did not have a breakout performance. Six last for week. sixty-seven with a touchdown is keep the bar higher for McBride, please. That, well, recovering fumbles is not the standard that I have for him. The where the bar is for tight ends right now. Yeah, he's crushing that. That's bar. that's a breakout game. Okay, yeah, but low bar. Yeah, no, the, the bar is very low. You he you just, start pretty much top. everyone everywhere. I think the real yep. thing to keep your eyes on is Laporta. Just be, you know, is is he very involved or not? The yeah, where did that quote came from? The that was that wasn't good right English. grammar. Where uh, yeah, whatever. I, I was trying to read and talk at the same time. Of okay, it was from Ben Johnson, of saying quote last week it was Amon Ross St. Brown. This week it's Laporta. Next week it's going to be somebody else. That's just the nature of the beast. We've got a lot of weapons. It's hard to guarantee someone five to eight targets every single game. That's just not how it works. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it is accurate. He's right, and that will uh, that will be upsetting. Um, Welcome to San Francisco when everyone's healthy. Yeah, so it's literally La what happens. If Laporta has an, a great game, then you worry that uh, maybe that means that JMO doesn't. Right. And, um, you know, for my trade, I hope maybe not. All right, we'll <laughs> uh, take a break, come back with the Chiefs-Falcons. <laughs> By the way, we get double Monday Night Football this week. Mike, it's the what? It's the special, the special double header. Are they starting it? Yeah, that's okay. What, they're at what least time? oh, they're like cool. one they're, hour. They're forty five minutes. Yeah, that's staggered. so stupid. What? I want to watch it all, man. You feel, you're shrugging your shoulders. You like it? I don't know. I got more screens than one. I got a phone. I don't yeah. mind being a little bit, you know, into two games. That's all right. We'll be okay. It's double football time, Mike. Yeah. All right, the Chiefs Sunday night football take on the Falcons. Falcons in prime time again. Chiefs, the uh, DK Sportsbook line, Chiefs minus three, over under is 46 and a half. And there it is. Oh, yeah. Andy's almost upset of the week. I'm in on this one. I thought, I'm in on this I one. Thought, I, don't, I don't try to force them. So I thought we were out this week. I thought we did not. Like, I, I was tempted by the Rams. Then I started looking at that matchup and McVay and what he's done against Shanahan and like they're getting their butts kicked. Like the, the 49ers, <laughs> they don't need to put their helmets on front ways. They could put them on backwards and win that game. But the Chiefs, Falcons, the Chiefs have looked like last week's performance against Cincinnati showed some of the, I think the cracks in the offense. Pacheco, the truth of the matter is, is we cannot always assume that the Chiefs just magically overcome everything with great efficiency on the offensive side, losing Pacheco should necessarily be a massive, massive loss to the offensive success of this team, moving the ball down the field, first downs, sustained drives. Pacheco is such a different player than Samaj P. Ryan and Carson Steele. And he's been the engine for about a year now. Yeah, I mean, you looked back at what, I don't know the exact numbers off the top of my head, but I think, I think Patrick Mahomes was the quarterback 12 over the last 11 weeks, and then so far this year is quarterback 14 over the first two. The The way this team functions is running the football, and we haven't seen evidence that Kelsey is, is going to be heavily involved yet, and we haven't had proven – like Xavier Worthy is doing everything he can do as a two games into his career rookie with Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes, but I don't know that Kansas City – like they normally figure it out, but we haven't seen special Mahomes yet. Yeah, this this will be really really interesting uh, to see how the Falcons' defense can hold up as well. This is in Atlanta, uh, so the home crowd there is that is that part of your yeah almost upset call? Yeah, and the, and the great finish to last week, and the fact that they like the Falcons were in the game, right? Like the Falcons' defense on the road were in the game against Philadelphia, and that's something through a couple of weeks we've seen. Like that game against Pittsburgh. They couldn't move the football in offense in the first game that Kirk Cousins was back. He looked better last week. And it's, it's you know, it, as weird as it is, 
seeing Aaron Rodgers play better and play differently in his third week. It, it, you know, you saw Kirk Cousins week one not move, literally not move. I don't think he took like a snap where he where he you know moved a, a, a step. Then last week he was taking a couple play actions. He was moving. It looked like he you know he was using his legs a little bit more. So now going into week three, I I think that's that's great. He's he Cousins is a couple months off compared to Rogers. Yes. So just so always keep that in mind of and a more difficult leg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His plant leg. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I mean that was right, but it just sounded funny. Yeah. Uh this if, if I agree that this should be an almost upset. Uh it's hard though for for fantasy. Bijan's in every single week. Drake London got the it's not garbage time uh production, but the the catch up at the uh, desperation catching up at the end. You remember but, earlier, Mike, when you were saying um how the Kansas yes, City Chiefs that's, that's where we were going. Totally took out Jamar Chase. Yeah. Do this, they do they choose to is the are they Of like, course they do. That of, is Drake London that guy for the team. What does that make Darnell Mooney a spot start this week? Because he was three for eighty eight. He seems to be on the same page with Kirk Cousins, um, who has looked to him down the field and in a game where they are projected as underdogs, it they it, should have to throw the ball a little it, bit. The hard part is it should be Kyle Pitts. His line's at 38 and a half But yards. it was not <laughs> Kyle Pitts. <laughs> it, it should be Kyle Pitts. But I... You see his his receiving yards line? Yeah, yeah, 38 and a half. But it's like, it should be him, but if it's not Kyle Pitts, it might just be Ray Ray. Ray Ray McLeod looked good. I, yeah, um, we'll, we'll see if that's enough. I, I think I'm fine taking a flex option approach with Darnell Mooney. Drake London is someone that... Be, I, I feel like because of where you drafted him, because of you know the the capital spent and everything, you pretty much have to start him. No, and I don't want to. No, well, you let, don't have. But to. let me clarify that statement then, because if you're like, well, Mooney is okay as a flex, but I'm benching Drake London. <laughs> I know it that, feels weird that's and like, wrong. That, that's just not complete. London played. London played well last week to finish the game. He had a good a good line. I just want to highlight this because we have a consistency snapshot tool on the website and consistency scores for players where we mark what percentage of the time they finish over a usable benchmark. I just want to bring this up because in the last 17 games played for Kyle Pitts, 29% of the time he's over eight points. That's not good. What, so, what grade is that? That is a D. You know who D else has disgusting. a D in uh, consistency? Drake London. But obviously this uh, most of these games are Arthur Smith when we're looking at their last Arthur, rolling 17. I mean, Kyle Pitts would – kill for Arthur Smith's level of first read targets. Okay, so let's go. He's not he's being targeted six percent of the time on first read. These these mid guys like JSN with the breakout last week or or Drake London. Probably JSN. Amari Cooper. Amari Cooper. Uh, I, gets that, the Giants. There I think I would oh. I, I would go London. Oh come on. Tank Dell. Come on. Tank. Okay. I'd go tank over Drake London. Yeah. So but Kyle Pitts is borderline benchable. Yeah. I mean you you can't you can't bench him, though. I mean, I'm just saying with the landscape of tight ends. So this week, looking at – like, I had the Najoku loss, and I'm looking through waiver wires and trying to find a matchup that makes sense, and it's just like I, – I, I don't know that who – I don't know who is out there on the waivers I would start over. Kyle the Pitts. Falcons have the exact same pass run rate as last year. Just throwing it out there. They're just using their better players a little bit more often. But Algier looked good, and, and Bijan, his line is very high. So um, Bijan's always in your lineup. On the other side, Rashi Rice is your lock yeah. to uh -huh. start. Kelsey right now, I think he's a lock in For your sure. lineup, and For you sure. just you want to see it bounce back. But at running back, Carson Steele is an emergency play. You spent the money on him. I think he'll be okay. Gus Edwards or Carson Steele? I think I'll take the chance on Steele myself. I think I, I would take it on I Steele. would as well. The, the, the Steelers' offense uh, or defense is very, very good against Gus. Patrick Mahomes, what do you do? You just play him. I uh, yeah, I mean he's I'm probably he, yeah he's probably in a he's my quarterback ten right now. Like you can't be streaming someone over Mahomes, not yet. No, no, but I mean if if you happened to draft the Jaden Daniels, uh, Goff, like the you know I'd, I'd play those guys over over oh, Mahomes. Oh man, I that's a lot of fantasy courage. To play golf over Mahomes? <laughs> yes. I mean, it's not like Mahomes has been very good. I know. I know. I just. 
Mahomes has emotionally scored that would be a very difficult. Yeah, Mahomes has not scored fifteen fantasy points so far on the season. Uh, paint we have, the, we paint have a the note, picture. A note here that Mahomes has scored more than seventeen points once since Halloween last year. That yeah. is insane. Crazy. The, I mean, the picture is that it's not Carson Steele and it's not Samaj P. Ryan. It's Patrick Mahomes. To who? Uh, I mean, Rasheed Rice. You get gadgety with Xavier Worthy, and and hopefully. Kelsey, Kelsey is is yeah. the main beneficiary here of the Pacheco injury. Two Monday night games. Jacksonville 0-2 taking on the 2-0 Buffalo Bills who have looked pretty good. And the DraftKings Sportsbook line, Buffalo minus 5, the over-under is 45.5. Jacksonville's looked pretty bad. If there was a button I could push for almost double the line of the week, this would be it. <laughs> I don't think Jacksonville is, has the makeup or players to go into Buffalo and do jack squat. Okay, I do think they've got a, a a pretty talented defense. This will be a lot of uh, Josh Allen on Josh Allen <laughs> attempt. Oh. Um, they've they've got a good pass rush, but offensively, I, I'm so impressed by the Bills' defense. The Bills have lost so many assets on defense, uh, both through free agency and injury, and McDermott is just. He's a very, very he's good. He's doing it. He's nice. He, I mean, he's obviously a defensive uh, coach, but I'm just th thoroughly impressed based on personnel versus results. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. I got a fun one for you. Who's completing a higher percentage of their passes? Anthony Richardson <laughs> or Trevor Lawrence? Andy? You wouldn't be asking that question. If the answer was Trevor Lawrence. I, I am. But. Oh, oh you caught him. It's but pretty low, though. It's 51. Yeah, I mean. 51. I mean, Richardson's at 49. And we're, I mean, we are rightly, like, being critical of Anthony Richardson's quarterback play. And we have not said great things about Trevor Lawrence this year, but holy crap. That's, t I mean, he has made. That's terrible. He's made terrible decisions. They've, they they super miss Calvin Ridley. They super miss him. G Gabe Davis and Brian Thomas, like Brian Thomas, is there yet? Yeah, like he's, he's a super yeah, he's talented he's athlete, two games. but he cannot take over the game yet for you, and at least that we haven't seen. So it's depressing. By the way, a little update for you: no sign of Mixon and Pierce at practice. Okay, so it looks like a Cam Akers week might be on the horizon. Right. Um, Travis Etienne. So far, Buffalo. That's the they've been funneling it to the run. That would be your player. Yep. But I don't think I'm touching another player. And I, I emergency might be Brenton Strange because, yes, that's a player. That's a player's <laughs> name. He plays tight end, and Evan Ingram's not going to play. And last week he had six targets. So if you get desperate, like if I'm going Colby Parkinson or Brenton Strange, I'm probably chasing Brenton Strange. Yes. Oh, I, if, if you're down that deep and low, then, yes, Brenton Strange. That's where it's deep like – Deep and low. That, uh. That's where – you're talking about pivots from there. That's where I would just keep with Kyle Pitts. If I, I'm not going to yeah. go to Brent, uh, Brenton Strange there. And and Brian Thomas, he has been outstanding. That dude is awesome. He's going to be a great football player. This is not a good week for him. Um, both last year and this year, the Bills were top six against wide receivers and fantasy points given – up the bills are at home so I, i'm i'm looking elsewhere in only this eight targets on the year for brian thomas total yeah so that that's the challenge you got to catch that lightning in a bottle on the other side what are you doing at wide receiver for buffalo is it khalil shakir as a flex yeah it's it's shakir and log out i i don't think so personally based on the absurd absurd rate jacksonville's playing man defense um, Jackson, Shakir is a, is, is more of their zone beater. I, I think I'm not playing him, but I'm just calling my shot that I think Keon Coleman is probably okay. the best play this week. More receptions than last week. <laughs> I, yes, I will. I will declare it. Okay. Okay. Where for, uh, for Dalton Kincaid, is this a kind Ooh. of a red alert week for you? I, you'd like to see some progress here. Last week was disrupted by an injury mid game. They got him involved early, and then they, it was a blowout. Like, they didn't need to throw the football because James Cook went insane. To me, I would love to see it, but I – I believe his A dot, Kyle, I don't know if you have it in front of you. I think it's negative. His his first two passes of the game were, were like, behind the line of scrimmage, but that that was encouraging to me. It, was, it said, hey, we didn't use him much week one. Week two, he is our focus to get him started to start the game. That's when he got injured and left. 
and when he came back, it was a blowout. So what Andy's saying, I think, is right. I'm not too panicked on Kincaid yet. Oh, I'm, I'm saying that this week, let's say we have Kincaid goes out there and it's another four for 30. Or yeah, whatever. his line is 37 and a half, so it would be oh, four for 37. Disgusting. Saying so if we are under that, if where are we? It's the touchdown I'm looking for this week. All right. Let's get let's get in the end zone. We're if we're five for forty two and a touchdown, I'm happy. Feeling yeah. all right. All right. And obviously you start Josh Allen, you start oh, and James, James Cook, Cook as well. Yeah, he's he's been awesome. He's he's great. He's been so good. They they're doing what they want to do on offense and they're two and oh. Yeah, Kincaid's average depth of target on the year is uh negative point six. I think they're still figuring out the passing game. Sure. I mean it's all brand new. Washington's one and one. They take on the Bengals, who are zero and two. The DK Sportsbook line: Cincinnati minus seven and a half. The over under is forty seven. And so, a couple LSU Heisman Trophy winners taking one another on in prime time. That should be fun, at least for one of them. And I think that player is Joe Burrow. My start of the week with a passing yards line of twenty uh, two hundred sixty four. Delightful. That's healthy. Jason has Zach Moss as the start of the week. Um, you know, somebody somebody wrote in and said we really messed up because oh, we really? didn't tell him to start Moss over Ramondre. Mm. And well, I, it was my I'm, start of the week. And I said hindsight, you know, is not currently programmed into the start sit tool. Ramondre was leading the NFL in touches, but now you wish you had the chance to start Zach Moss mm -hmm. instead of him. Through two weeks, he went from sixty five percent to eighty percent of the snaps. 75% so of the running back attempts. Pretty confident. Five yeah, they, carries inside the 20. They, they went out and they gave him money, and he is the starting running back here. Uh, Chase Brown is the backup. That that That's clear through two weeks. Um, A little bit like Pollard and Spears has worked out. Exactly like that. And if you look at um, you know last year, the Washington Commanders defense was historically bad at fantasy points, given up to both quarterback and running back. So I, I I agree with both of our starts of the week here. You just target the commanders. Yep. If you see the commanders, uh, you hope that your team is facing them and not your opponent's team. The way I am handling T. Higgins, by the way, like he was limited on Thursday. Hopefully we see a full practice between now and Monday, but we, we don't have that information yet. Currently, because the matchup is so juicy, I'm stashing Yoshi on the bench and seeing how things are going to play out for T. Higgins, like that's, I'm trying my best to hold out for T. On would you, Monday, would you be willing to stash Mike Gesicki, like put him in the flex? Like if if Yoshivas is not, yeah, if Yoshivas is is rostered, would you be willing to to uh, man. Uh, give yourself the time for T. Higgins, putting him in your flex, grabbing Mike Gesicki, who you know last week, yeah, uh, he was. I mean, he leads the team in targets right now. He was, he was like the production was amazing for him, and yet. He was on the field for forty-seven percent of snaps. Like he would, the, his targets per route run was was ludicrous, and it's hard to know. That feels more like fool's gold to me. Of uh, that was a product of of they couldn't get anything going to Jamar Chase, and Gasicki was the one who that that was left open. Yeah, no, that that's fair because they will be able to get it to Jamar Chase this week. Also, Gasicki a lot. Gasicki was limited in Thursday's practice with a calf after Jamar Chase's down week from a defense that could take him out. Uh, now he has an 81 and a half yard uh, receiving line at DK. So yeah, Chase is going to be yeah, fine. If you have any inkling that you can go get Jamar Chase, you can tear him a away from the team that drafted him. You got to do it right now. Um, Any other players that you want to talk about in this game that you think are more interesting as, you know, flex options or starts? Brian Robinson and sure. Austin Eckler look really good um, as players. Like on a per touch basis, I'm I'm impressed so far. Both weeks with both players, I would start Brian Robinson. He's been getting the volume and the touchdowns. Um, Austin Eckler maybe even a flex worthy player. I got a nasty question for you. Should he play? Of you gotta course. hit the button. Oh, okay. Uh, Terry McLaurin or Michael Pittman Jr. <laughs> I mean, right right now with the news on Pittman, I can't look at that. I was saying, should he? Yeah, I, I, should that come out? It's like that it's was McLaurin. nothing. It's McLaurin. It's Like McLaurin is two for seventeen, week one, six for twenty-two. Yeah, um, the, this offense. Both of is these not, guys are are borderline unplayable. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, I would play a lot of other players. 
over those two. So Mike Gesicki, did you guys mention he's limited? Yeah. Yep. yeah. Um, all right. It is time to wrap it up. <laughs> nope, that's not it. Goodbye, Foot Clan. Uh, good luck. Fantasy Face Off, presented by DraftKings. All right, week one in the books. Week two. Week two in the book. <laughs> it was our week one because yeah. we brought the face off back. But we got to catch um, up. Mike comfortably in second place. Living, living the dream. Uh, I ended up in first place, and Jason, yeah. you're the you get a debut the yeah. wheel of shame. Wheel of shame. All righty, let's see how it goes. Spin that wheel. I'm very excited for this. What do we got? Uh, Smurfs up, Viking, Starman, Nose Hose? Nose Hose? Nose Hose? What the heck is a Nose Hose? Oh, this does not seem <laughs> oh, <it's>, Okay. Right. <laughs> the, the Nose Hose is an elephant. All right. Well, <laughs> beautiful. Beautiful. It's not even a mask. It's just, it's it's just very a... tight. Yeah, it looks pretty tight. Oh, man, Mike, You're... you are so happy that you did not get this. This it, could not fit not on have... your dome. It would not have worked. That would have split Ooh. it open. Oh. Yeah, your eyes are wide open. You're very comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta, if you've ever thought about a facelift, Jay, that's what it would do the, for yeah, you. Yeah, just uh, <laughs> put the put the nose hose on. Um, You look good. You Thanks. look good. Nice, nice, shameful week one uh, outfit for you. Yeah. Um, why don't you give us your quarterback first? Sure. Um, why not? What could go <laughs> wrong here? Uh, my quarterback this week is Derek Carr. I'm sitting in the car. So start of the week, stream of the week, and DraftKings quarterback. Yeah. He is 5,800, and I know that because he is also my quarterback. He is my quarterback here, my quarterback league of record. What could go wrong emotionally? Oh, you both win Derek Carr. Emotionally tying yourself to Derek Carr for the weekend. I, presume... I love – because you guys had the same quarterback last week. Yeah. yeah. But you, I do not. You've got Kyler. I got Kyler. Yeah. Murray, 6,900 yeah. at home, Arizona, high over under, and he got me a win last week. I will say this. I do not like my lineup this week. <laughs> okay. So usually you've got like a couple hard-hitting stars that can score a lot. My whole roster is like mid, and they're all guys I like. Oh, but that's a good ooh, strategy. Yeah. Who do you got at running back? All right, running back, the only one player that I think could go off off is Jameer Gibbs at 6,800 against the Arizona Cardinals. And I've got Jordan Mason with his – Incredible uh, rushing line at 6,200. I got Jordan Mason as well. And my other running back is Tony Pollard, 6,000 at home. That's funny because I have Mason and Pollard. Oh, okay. Those are my two running backs. Uh, I made some last-second pivots this morning. Okay. That's always a good move. Um, which, uh, yeah, I, I had Gibbs. I do not have Gibbs anymore. Oh, all right. So Mason and Pollard are the running backs. Who are your three wideouts, Jason? Uh, my three wideouts, well, I'm, I'm stacking with Olave, of course, with the Derek okay. Carr. Uh, I've got Devontae Smith in that same game on the other side of the field. He is 6,900. Very nice. And I'm I'm putting my money where my my hope is. Where your nose hose is? <laughs> where my nose hose is. <laughs> and I'm putting Tank Dell in there. He's only 5,200. Oh, yeah. uh, yeah. Two talented That's of a, a player to be 5,200. Uh, if he doesn't drop it. Uh, yeah. I went the other side with the, the stack attack. I'm going Rashid Shahid mm -hmm. at 5,300. I got my start of the week, Brandon Ayuk. At sixty two hundred, and then Jackson Smith and Jigba is fifty four hundred at home versus Miami. I like that. I went with Harrison, Marvin Harrison Jr. with sure. Kyler Murray. He was expensive seventy four hundred this week. I also have Olave. I think this is the breakout game sixty three hundred. And then I went bargain shopping. I went Juwan Jennings forty one hundred okay. with the opportunity in San Francisco. Heavy favorites against the Rams. Nice at tight end. I really, really, really wanted George Kittle. Um, unfortunately, with the hamstring injury, I had to pivot. So I went to Mark Andrews at 4,800 for a hopeful breakout game against Dallas. I got Brock Bowers. I got the Rook in there at 5,400. Which is great. I, I went. This is the last time you'll get him cheap. I actually pivoted from Brock Bowers this morning. Oh. Uh, who is my start of the week? So he's going to be great. But I took, I'm taking a shot this week because I figured Bowers is going to be in your lineup. And I think this will be it. For Sam Laporta, so I'm taking Sam Laporta. He's what's, a little more. His price? He's six thousand. Okay, but I think in Arizona this week, and I wanted to have a, I wanted to have a player that I didn't expect in your lineups, so I went Sam yeah, Laporta. You got it. Flex and defense, Jason. I've got JSN as well in my flex. Right. Uh, he's a good value at 5400, 
And I spent a little bit more. I'm going with the Bears defense against Anthony Richardson. Um, good defense, turnover machine. Uh, I've got Devon Achan. Oh! Oh! That's hurts. That, is, that feels bad. <laughs> I had him originally instead of Gibbs. 7K. Uh, and, and then my defense, the uh, Minnesota Vikings. Yeah. I went with uh, I had to I had to save some money. Marvin Harrison's expensive. Uh, <laughs> I went Deonta Foreman at forty four hundred yeah, in okay. the flex against New York. Jason mentioned he thinks one of those guys is going to have a big game. Hope it's Foreman for my lineup. And then I also have the Bears. I have the Bears at twenty six hundred. They're going to cause some real problems for Anthony Richardson and the decision making processes there in Indy. And then the uh, the only quick update I know of is Jordan Love is practicing again. Mm. Okay. So that was chance. Fantasy Forecast presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. New DraftKings customers bet $5 to get 200 in bonus bets instantly. Download the Sportsbook app and use the code BALLERS only at DraftKings Sportsbook. The crown is yours. That'll do it for today. That'll do it for Friday's show. That means we've got football on the horizon. Sunday morning, Sunday live with Mike, the fantasy hitman. Don't miss it. Uh, on YouTube, on Twitter. Catch him live. He'll help you out. Goodbye. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas, 21 and over, age and eligibility varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. For additional terms and responsible gaming resources, see dkng.co slash ftball.